So at a high level, Ceramic is a dynamic information management protocol for the open web. And really, when we were designing Ceramic, we really thought about, um, you know, like why sort of the, you know, file or content management systems are, are broken today. And that's either because they're hosted on a DB or server, or sort of their static files that live somewhere on the decentralized web. And so um, we basically wanted to create a new model uh, for content, which we're calling smart documents. And it's all completely built peer to peer. And so what smart documents do are really moves content beyond databases and static files. So you can basically turn your files into dynamic objects that get a permalink that never changes. Um, they have verifiable versions, so you can update these files um, completely permissionlessly. Um, you can give them each, each file its own capability set and logic. So you can do cool things like you know, define the rules that govern what constitutes a valid update to that content um, in really dynamic and interesting ways, which I'll jump into. Um, it also opens up unlimited collaboration and sort of incomposability um, that we're sort of used to as it, as it relates to blockchains and Web3. But you can access a global network of interoperable information where you can openly discover, query, and share documents across applications and contexts. And lastly, um, you get improved security and trust. So you can really guarantee the state of your document to others in a completely transparent and decentralized way. Um, and so state management is something that, that's really been what we've been trying to get to with the notion of smart documents. How can we build a state management system or a version control system for content that lives completely decentralized, um, but that can be customizable? And so, uh, some of the features of, of smart documents, sort of some of them I've covered uh, at a high level, but basically every document uh, is identified by a permalink and it never changes. Um, each document gets verifiable versions that can be explicitly referenced. So you can reference you know, a doc ID and you get the latest state of a document, or you can reference uh, a doc ID with, the, with sort of a query version parameter and you get only that explicit version as it was at that point in time. Um, and every document can be defined by a schema. So the protocol can actually enforce if you set a schema to be some JSON schema, for example, um, all content that's written to that document has to conform to the schema or the protocol will reject it. Um, you can configure each document. So each individual bit of content, you can choose where to persist your content, which can be, um, you know, like Filecoin, for example, um, or a SQL server. You can choose which blockchain to use for your timestamps, and timestamps are actually what we use to explicitly form versions. And so you can choose to anchor those updates on Ethereum, um, Bitcoin, any other blockchain platform, um, and you can configure privacy settings. So you can basically encrypt documents in whole, in part, just records, sort of however you want, um, and you can manage the sharing of that if private. And lastly, logic. So you can basically define a set of rules that enforce the update behavior of your documents. You could say, my document can only be updated if the owner updates it, or all of the owners update it, or one of the owners updates it. Or you can even write scripts that say, automatically update this document if the state of document B changes, and update this document to reflect that. So you can really start to code content and program content um, in a new way completely permissionlessly. Um, and also documents can emit events that cause other things to happen, such as a node you know, pinning your image content or persisting it to Filecoin. Um, touching back on composability that we covered, so um, really what this you know, network of verifiable programmable information allows is um, you know, all this information can be trusted. The state of content is auditable and transparent. Um, and so anyone can use any document and content on the network, um, particularly if it's public, by just querying nodes for it. Um, you know, documents can link other documents to create chains or mappings of linked content, so you can form document graphs. Um, and each document, to some extent, already does this, because a schema, for example, is defined as a ceramic document. And then you reference that schema in the document you're creating, saying this document is going to conform to the schema. And so each document already is just a mapping of two, a schema and a document, but you can then map actual documents together, which I'll go into. Um, 
and aggregations. So, you know, for example, if you wanted to build a decentralized um, logging platform or commenting system on Ceramic, you could basically have each user individually post their own con their own comments to their own document and have another document that just runs a script that listens to all the documents with a specific tag or something, and it will just aggregate that up into one script. Um, and last, and integrations. So it kind of, Ceramic is really this rules and content management engine that exists on top of a bunch of other technologies. So um, identity, every document on Ceramic is authored by a DID, and DIDs can be key and network agnostic. So you have a DID, which is a decentralized identifier, and it can be controlled by keys from any blockchain uh, or multiple keys from multiple blockchains. And so you, know, you can control your same DID with your Ethereum key, your Filecoin key, your Bitcoin key, your Cosmos key, et cetera. And that really makes content interoperable because now you can look up that Bitcoin key or that Ethereum key, Filecoin key, resolve the DID, and then resolve its content. And so you're not actually locking content into any particular network because Ceramic sort of forms this meta um, document infrastructure on top of existing systems. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, storage, you just, in a Ceramic node, you can plug in a persistence provider and that can be Filecoin. Um, you know, we got a grant from Filecoin to both integrate Filecoin keys with the DID for identity and integrate uh, Filecoin persistence as an option to a Ceramic node. So you can actually persist your content in a decentralized way. Um, or if you're already using centralized servers, you can do that too. It obviously offers different guarantees about the documents that are persisted that way, but the protocol is sort of agnostic to persistence. Um, compute, if you have documents that run scripts, you can invoke code that lives on a server somewhere or anywhere else. Um, and lastly, you can plug in any blockchain for anchoring. And I just covered a lot of this, but I'll just focus in on um, some of the IPFS pieces, so um, sort of separated from the Filecoin persistence, how we actually use the IPFS stack is that every record in a document, so a document consists of a chain of records, they're all IPLD objects. Um, and we use libp2p to sync updates around the nodes in the network. So it's a gossip network where you know one node can manage the state of a document and others can, can gossip about it and also replicate it if they want. Um, the network, the interesting thing here with Ceramic is, unlike blockchains, there's no global state. So instead, we opted for doc state. So there's only state per document, and they form doc chains because you have a series of records that are anchored, but there's no global state between documents. So you know, in the same way as uh, IPFS works, if you don't persist your content to Filecoin or you're the only node running that document and you shut your computer off or you delete that content, like it can be gone because the, the doc state is only maintained as long as the network maintains it. And this provides scale um, because content, there will be so much content in the world that you can't run a global state machine on that. And so this allows Ceramic to be run in really re resource constrained environments um, such as browsers and other things without um, a bunch of other layers built on top. And I covered a lot of this stuff already, um, but interestingly, if you look at the diagram, like different nodes, which are the triangles, can run different configurations. So one is running Bitcoin and Ethereum anchoring and uh, libp2p and IPLD, another one's just running Bitcoin anchoring, another one's just running Ethereum anchoring, and there's an overlap in that, but there's no global state. Uh, how documents work really quickly, so you have um, you know, a series of records, there's a Genesis record, then it gets anchored on a blockchain, then you submit one or multiple signed records, then it gets anchored on a blockchain and you get an explicit new version. And then a couple more update records happen and then you get a new anchor which forms a new version. Um, and because we use blockchains for anchoring, we can do thing, we can guarantee the state at, at versions. And so this is really important for decentralized key management uh, and trusted content where, you know, if I remove an owner from a document, I don't want that owner to be able to update that document. And no amount of subjectivity and consensus is allowed in that case. And so we have strict ordering with blockchain um, and earliest anchor wins. And doc types are really the rules engine for each document. When you're creating a document, you have to specify the doc type. Three doc types come out of the box with the node. Uh, you can also just write your own, which people are already doing. But Tiles are just JSON stores. You can store any arbitrary JSON content in there. 
great for schemas, things like profiles, like blog posts, messages. Um, 3ID is a, did, is a did method native to ceramic, so a decentralized identity system with secure key rotation. Uh, account links are documents which link your DID to on-chain cryptographic accounts or network accounts somewhere else. Um, and writing your own, we already have people in the community writing verifiable claims doc types, so you can create and verify claims according to the W3C standard for those. Um, and also someone's working on a script doc type as part of HackFS. Actually, both of these are part of HackFS. Um, and the script doc type is doing the aggregation that I talked about before. So you could build a commenting system that one document is aggregating all the, the contents of a whole bunch of documents owned by the users themselves. Um, it's available as a full JavaScript client, or you can use it over an HTTP API. Um, both APIs are exactly the same, um, so sort of like IPFS would work. Um, and some things being built on top. So um, we recently have been doing a bunch of standards work around identity on Ceramic, because Ceramic is really uh, a great platform for not only managing decentralized identifiers, but when you think about identity and what that needs to be in the decentralized web, Identity really is an index of all of your resources, whether those are your profiles or your peer-to-peer -peer databases that live on a server somewhere, such as textile databases or orbit databases, or your files stored on Filecoin, or um, your social graph that might live somewhere, or various other things. And so right now in the decentralized web, there's no single place to query and discover all of the resources associated with a given identity and these resources exist across all sorts of platforms. Um, and so IDX aims to solve that. And um, like I said, it's fully interoperable with any blockchain and any storage system, um, but it forms this mechanism for discoverability. Uh, this is the architecture of what it looks like, and each of these boxes are ceramic documents. So you have a DID, it could be any DID, and it points to the root index document, which just contains mappings from like profiles to the profiles index which is its own document. And in the profiles index, you might find mappings from basic to a uh, location, which may be a ceramic doc ID for the basic profile of that DID. Interestingly, uh, in collections are sort of your aggregations of user data usually created by an application. And so those are defined by a definition, which consists of a set of data stores with explicit schemas. So say I'm using a textile thread and it uses this schema, and I'm using an orbit store and it uses this schema and a ceramic document that uses the schema, let's say your app consists of those three data sources, you define that in a definition, which gets stored in the collections index, and that maps to a reference, which contains user-specific information about that definition. So my textile thread ID is this, and it lives at this hosted service endpoint, and my access controller is this. And so really, if you look up a DID, you can find its root index, you can find its collections, and then you can find all of the data related to that given application um, with the user still being able to manage consent of it. And the, the projects on the right are already working on integrations with IDX. Um, so Textile for their hub and for their threads DB, Fleek is building a new product where they need identity management in a decentralized way, and they're using IDX for collections as well, and all sorts of things like team formation, usernames, and OWL uh, is doing something similar, but a little different. So a bunch of great IPFS projects and ecosystem already building on it. Uh, I won't go into all of these because I know I'm running short on time, but obviously content and information that needs to be trusted and programmable uh, or abide by a set of rules, um, there's really almost no limit to what you can build on it. Um, and so here's a couple examples. Timeline. Um, Alpha DevNet is available now. You can start playing with Ceramic already. Clay will come out in a month. Um, it has just some improvements to it, including the use of DAG Jose, which is a new standard for signing and encryption uh, for JSON web um, that we got a grant from IPFS and Ethereum to build. Uh, we're doing that along with Textile. The, Go, or the JS implementation is already ready. Um, we're looking for someone to build the Go implementation. So you're interested in this, uh, please reach out. We're looking to, to hire someone to, to write that Go version. And mainnet will come out in mid-Q4. Um, here are some resources. Uh, our Discord is there. I'll also drop a, like, a link to it in the chat, because I know that's not human readable. Um, you can find us on Twitter. 
We're on Ceramic Network on GitHub, and a lot of the standards I talked about, including doc types, schemas, IDX, and all sorts of things are being written out as CIPs so they can be reused and shared by the community uh, in a collaborative way. So if that's interesting to you, please take a look around uh, and contribute.